For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God is our all in all, and I would like to just open up in prayer this morning because we want God to have his way in this place on this morning. Lord God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for being holy, God, for being righteous, God, for being marvelous, God. We thank you, Father, for keeping us, Lord God, and being God and God alone. Lord, we thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for your spirit, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you would have your way in this place on today, God. Have your way, God. We thank you for the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, God. We thank you for the word that is going to go forth on this morning. We thank you and we praise you, God, because you are so good. Lord, we ask that you bless our man of God and the woman of God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the word that is going to come forth on this morning. In the name of Jesus, the word that will deliver, set free. In the name of Jesus, the word that will heal. In the name of Jesus on today, God, in all these blessings, God, we ask in the, in your mighty name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. At this time, we're going to have the house of praise to come forth. Good morning. Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. 
Psalm 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon righteous, the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Even when you don't hear God's voice, he is always watching and moving. Today, Hop presents the ministry of the God who sees dance drama. was a single mother. She was abandoned by the family she belonged to. And there in the wilderness with her son alone with very little provision, she was wondering. She was questioning. Does anyone care? She's crying now the desert She's lost in her despair She thinks nobody loves her Hey, God thinks nobody's there But God says I she had heard an inner invitation to come and taste and see. And so she vowed herself to her mother-in-law and said, where you go, I will go. Where you lie, I will lie. Where you die, I will die. And she begins a journey to the promised land. She's traveling through the desert. And she's leaving her despair. He says, I will put 
son, Obed, who gave birth to a son, Jesse, who gave birth to a son named David. Now the same once shepherd boy, mighty warrior, anointed king, is alone, terrified in the darkness. He's hiding in the desert. Battling despair. David thinks his life is over. It's over. And God, he doesn't care. But God says, I. Glory, 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 hallelujah. 
Wow, wow, wow. That was awesome. I'm the God who sees. Omniscient, omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Can we just worship God for a minute? For seeing all of our moments, for seeing everything that we go through, for seeing us. Lord, we thank you for being God. We thank you for the awesome display of your word through dance, God. Because then we thank you for seeing us. Amen. Hop, that was awesome. Thank you so much. To God be the glory for the things that he does. Wow. So awesome. So awesome. Amazing ministry to God. Amen. How many of y'all know that God sees you? His eyes are everywhere. And we thank God for seeing us. Amen. So we are going to transition into our praise and the worship. And we invite you to join with us as we celebrate our God in song. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give our house a praise one more time. Drop a praise. Awesome. Glory to God. Yeah. How many of you love Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Do you really love him? Come on, let's worship him.
than anything. I love you, Jesus. And you're so worthy, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you for all you've done for us, God. We want to thank you this morning, God. Hallelujah. Do I have any thankful people in the house today? Are you really thankful this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, lift them up in this place. He's worthy. Hey. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy is down. People don't get enough pay. As for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Some say they just can't be the mothers and robbers. No place seem to be safe. You've been my protection every step of the way. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Hey, hey, hey. It could have been me.
Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. relationship song. I just want to highlight that. That last song is truly a relationship song. Now, if you're under the guise, under the perception that everything you got is because of you, And everything you've gained is because of something that you willed and dealed. That song don't mean nothing to you, really. It's, yeah. You're like, where was God in all of this? Man, here's the rebuttal. Who woke you up this morning? Here's a rebuttal. Who started you on your way? Here's a rebuttal. Who gives you strength when you have none? Who gave you the air to breathe? Who caused the sun to shine? Who turns day into night and night into day? Was it you or was it somebody else? I just want to give this song some perspective. Thank you, Lord, for all. Oh. Oh. For what? Say it again. All. Oh. For what? Say it again. All. Oh. So thank you, Lord, for all. Yes. Hallelujah. That last song was personal. 
And if that do- and if that song didn't feel personal to you, this is not a rebuke. It's an opportunity to grow. We believe in church and lifting people up. Church should be a place where you get exposed but then get loved upon at the same time. If you couldn't connect to this song, it's a relationship thing. Maybe you think of yourself highly more than we know what you should. You thinking you doing all this stuff and everything else that you, you know, you know what I'm saying? But it's okay to get reminded that it's not about you. I'd rather be reminded that it's not about me in this setting. Because this setting is protective and safe. Imagine being reminded it's not about you at the most inopportune time. Maybe when you're given the briefing for your job. Maybe your children tell you, man, you, know, man, you ain't all that in a bag of chips. You've had your flaws too, mom, dad. Maybe it's your friend checking you. Like, you know what? You got a lot of pride, man. You got a lot of pride, ma'am. Matter of fact, you jealous. You envious. You da 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 So it's... This is God giving you a nice setting to yes. expose the pride in you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That last song was personal. Yes. Thank you, That's Lord. a relationship song. Yes, yeah. Hallelujah. Just want to check the moments for it. So you thank you for your love. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your power. Yes. As my sister said, thank you for your protection. Yeah, that's personal. Every hour. Every hour. Yes, God. You know how many folk aren't here right now? My God. But his protection? And his unconditional love? Loving you in the state that you've been in. Loving you in the state that you choose to continue to be in. Loving you in spite of your past and your present and your future. The God who is all, who knows all and sees all, still loving me in spite of that. He knew you were going to do that thing that you did that caused you guilt and shame. He knew you were going to do the thing you did that wanted, that you wanted to take your own life. But he loves you in spite of that. Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your unconditional love for me. Not deserving of it, not one iota, but God, you still loved me. And have allowed me to walk this earth mistake after mistake. But yet you still see good in me. Thank you for your love. You're still rooting me on. The Bible says Jesus is our advocate. What is he advocating? He's advocating for you and for me. He's saying I died for a reason. And my death was not in vain. Let them live on a little bit longer so they can walk in their purpose. God, I know they're going to get it. Thank you for your love. unconditional, undeserving, but yet and still, you still give it to me. There is no good thing the Bible says that God withholds from you. I know the enemy has fooled you and said, yeah, but what about that promotion? Man, please. What about that thing that I wanted that I didn't get? Man, don't be deceived, please. What about you receiving grace and mercy? Receiving the things you don't deserve. Like the air you breathe. This same mouth has slighted God, has questioned God, has even cursed at him. Yet you still here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. That's a thank you. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That last song was personal. Let's meditate for a moment on his goodness. That's all we're saying. This is what church, welcome to church. 
This is why you should come to church right here. This is why you should join the church right here. It's these moments that you can't manufacture in your bedroom. Honestly, you can't because it's based on how you feel. You came into something already popping off, so it didn't matter how you felt. You had to just join right in. Oh, what are we doing? Thank you for your love. All right. I just sucks. I was mad when I came up in here, but thank you for your power. I got it. Hey, God. That's called church. Hard to do at the house when you don't feel like it. That's right. That's right. A lot of us are undisciplined. Yeah. That's okay. We ain't going to do it. Yeah. But when you get into the house of God, yes. there's environments that occur where you have to walk in them and you have to obey. You have to bow down. You either have to accept them or reject them, but you got to come into the space. Yes. That's what church is. Church is that. Worship, praise, and a word from the Lord. Yes. Is anybody ready for the word? Say amen. Amen. Is anybody ready for the word? word Say amen. God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for our senior pastor amen. and founder, C.G. McCarter. Check one, two. Mic check. Mic check. God bless you. Somebody lift those hands up and tell God thank you. Yeah, look, we already had the word. <laughs> Come on, wasn't that powerful? We had worship. We had wow. To each and every one of you, to God be the glory. To our Morning Star Church there in Rocky Mount, streaming in the sanctuary. To those that are streaming online, God is a good God. And, and right now, I'm just kind of going to, y'all know how we do. I'm just kind of going to sense the atmosphere and see where God wants to go because a lot just happened in here. It truly did. Um, I want to, <laughs> God is so good. That wasn't planned. Nothing y'all saw was planned. Okay, let me start out with this, God. Um, Shirley, come here a minute. Shirley, could you come here a minute? What, what happened to Nita? Um, listen, if you didn't see it on uh, Morning Star Church there, we, we are as one. And Nita and Shannon, what y'all did something I hadn't seen you do here before. There was a different type of house of praise ministry, so, but it was phenomenal. If you did not see this, Nita, Please go back and watch the video. That was amazing. That was amazing. So which one of you, Nita, could you come up, please? Could you come up? Amen. You got enough energy still left? Judge, can you help her out? I know. I know you had to push through. No, she's, she, every time she danced, she's pushing through. It's a miracle, and I do know that. I do know that. Thank you for being obedient, Attorney Chase. Give, give him the mic real quick. I feel God leading me to do this. I might preach, I might not, because yeah, we already got some strong impartation that went across in here. I can say what I got the next week. I'm just trying to see what God is doing. It was just so powerful. So I, I can't let this moment go by. I know everybody didn't see it, but that piece you all did in the beginning of this church, that was a message and a ministry all in itself. Then you all come back doing praise and worship. I know we had praise and worship. That the star also. God is up to something. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. What, you created the piece. What That was different. Y'all used just dance, but you were acting things out. Can you just... Shirley had uh, brought into the ministry, the ministry of drama. And if you remember, we used to do a few drama pieces. And we haven't done that in a long time. So this time God touched my heart and said, bring the drama in it. And have a child sit here as though they were watching the film, watching the movie. And you all acted out, put dance with drama. 
And so we told a story so that you all would know that God is always watching. He never stops seeing. He never forsakes. He never leaves. Thank you. You told the story. It was a message in the story. I encourage anybody that's got any type of technology, <laughs> go back and watch this piece. It was anointed, it will minister to you, and God is just so faithful, and it was just good. I just saw that. How you feeling right now, you okay? I'm a little tired. I know you pushed <laughs> through. I'm a little, I'm a little with, something. With, with the illness that tries to take her out, but God just keeps healing her over to God be and all over. Glory. And over, and over, he does, over, you look at a, a miracle. He does. Oh, y'all just bless my heart, I'm just telling y'all, I was sitting there, we, boy, this dance ministry started, what, many, how many years 2004. ago? 2004. 2004, and y'all have been here since 2004 with this dance ministry, and we've seen it resurface, we've seen people come and go but you've been faithful. Somebody said you've been faithful. And I've seen you all do some masterpieces in Jesus' name. Uh, but today. so so faithful yes we talk about it a lot and we share but it's the culmination of taking what god puts in your hands because a lot of times we we'll look and see that perhaps we don't have what we need to do what god is showing us to do but when you, your faithfulness um, it just makes room for the gifts and you realize what's in your hand is more than enough. And I just want to say we're so proud of you. We're proud of Hop, but you've been faithful. And this is a moment that was not planned, but you got to, I just thank God for what's happening right now. I, I, I watch um, Shannon and Camille, babies at my heroes. I'm, watching a whole nother generation coming up. We got young folks blowing shofars now. Come on. Wasn't that amazing? I knew it had to bless you. And he volunteered and he said, yes, I'll do it for you, Miss Nita. And those two young people, they've been at every rehearsal. And even when we tried to do this in March and then so many injuries, this one got injured and my hip went out and my this happened and that happened and, and it seemed like it wasn't gonna come forth. And those two young people, they were motivated and encouraged because they never stop. They come in excited every day. I'm ready, Miss Nita, what you want me to do? And, and they had to take on parts that they weren't supposed to do in the beginning. Yeah. And they did it, and they did it with love come on. and excellence. Both more than star and victory. And I want to bring this to the star. We are as one. There's something else going on in ministry now. And God is creating ministry to be who he's called you to be. You got to, you're not, not duplicating, imitating some other ministry you're saying. You are an original. And when you are an original, there is an anointing, which is the ability to do everything the Lord has manifest for you. Am I making sense in the house? Too many times we're trying to be something that we see somebody else doing. But what God created for you, it's for you. Somebody say, this is a great day to be in the sanctuary. It's a great day to be in the sanctuary. I'm just, I'm just so grateful for what I witnessed today. I still got a couple more weeks on my total heel, and I'm going to shout. I'm probably going to be in Rocky Mount, but I'm going to dance. I'm telling y'all now. This is a planned set out. It's a planned dance. Everybody say a planned praise. Planned praise. I've been practicing. I've been one leg in it at home. <laughs> Because when God bring you back from something, that you get what I'm saying? And, and as I'm standing here, we go forward. I want y'all to, Nita goes through a lot of medical challenges. She's come back from a stroke. 
Her respiratory what? problem. Two, Res go, go. two rotator cuff tears. Uh, herniated disc in my back. Herniated disc in my neck. Fibromyalgia. Migraines consistently. But somebody say, but God. I need somebody that know Jesus in a real way. Just put your hands on your neighbor's shoulder. And say, but God. It's still keeping you. How many folks know we're in this thing together? Somebody just holler, but God. Yeah. yeah, he is that kind of God. But it was God that kept you. It was God that made a way out of no way. It is God that keeps pushing us. Oh, go, go, go. can we come together on a Sunday and let the Holy Spirit have his way, but yet there is still substance and organization, and it's not spooky and scary. It's just people saying, I'm taking one day a week to celebrate the goodness of God. Amen. How many folks know we're in this thing together? Let's look at it and say, sister, my brother, you can depend on me to keep praying for you. You can depend on me to keep walking with you. If you fall, I'll help pick you up. Because I'm not your judge. I'm your encourager. I'm your brother. I'm your sister. We're in this thing together. And if there ever was a time for the body of Christ to come together, it's now. So, so much stuff separating us now. I'm Democrat. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I'm male. I'm female. I don't know what I am, but there's one thing I do know. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Somebody said I was created for God for such a time as this. So whatever your purpose is, is what I'm saying this morning. I just think God just wanted to be an encouraging Sunday. Whatever your purpose is, keep living it out. You have not failed. Your best days are still yet ahead of you. Who's receiving that? I mean, really this. God, I mean, some of you are here strategically this morning to be reminded and to continue to encourage you. Just keep doing what you're doing. Throw your right hand in the air and say, just keep living. That's it, because God is life. He's not death. So the devil, I don't think he wants you to make you feel like, what's the use of living? And living doesn't just mean just keep living. What's the use of keep doing this or keep doing that? Stay with what God has right now for you. This is a great time to do it. I know I've had y'all standing up here for a minute, but I am just so, we've been doing this for a long time. I'm going I'm to let you yeah. go. You still good? And we, back then that... I got a testimony. I'm just saying, you got a testimony? It's going to be that kind of Sunday. We'll test your money. <laughs> tell old Chase. So we, we got a testimony. The Lord had been speaking to me because I'll be calling ZZ or T, T Miller saying, I'm at, I ain't going to be there. I ain't going to be there. I ain't so never there. But for a legitimate reason to see my mom. But sometimes I don't be seeing my mom. I just be missing church, but I, I repent. So You don't be lying, do you? No. I'm just checking. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> on the days I don't text you, I don't say nothing. I don't lie. I just don't say nothing. But that ain't the testimony. <laughs> Somebody said, welcome to a real church. Stop at a church. See, welcome to a real this is church. what serving God is all about. That you can be real with each other and keep on going in Christ. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm not your judge. I'm no different than you are. Go ahead, finish telling your truth. A hop to this is a, a testimony of restoration. I had not been dancing for a long time, and um, I had prayed to the Lord to show me just what I was supposed to do. And uh, we were watching Dr. Shanitha, me and my mom, last Sunday, and she was cheering her own cuz, cuz, and mom got up and clapped, and she said, You ain't gonna dance. And then in my spirit, it got to be so many reasons why I would come and say, Why I don't dance anymore? My knee hurt, and it does. My neck hurt, and it does. And other, everything, I pretty much hurt at points in time. <laughs> but the prophet, I, I, I got to understand. Shanita spoke something to me that this was the year. It, I can't even say what she said, but she, t she was saying the same thing you were saying about the time. And I was sitting there, and she was talking to me. So I said, OK, when the time comes, God will let me know. 
So Nita called me with her sad story. <laughs> why, um, why I gotta come to rehearsal, cause everybody's sick and, and what have you, and she ain't got enough people to do this piece, and she wanted to get it done before you leave. I'm t that's the truth, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> I missed two of the rehearsals. I was just playing. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, you weren't. Uh, uh, so I had missed a couple of rehearsals, and I was thinking, well, maybe God will let me out of it, because she asked me all the time. And this time, um, I listened to the song, and I think yesterday when I heard, came to her rehearsal, yes. and Nita was like, look, now, you come on and do this rehearsal, because uh, I need somebody can just come and do it, and when then we get on with the get on. So that's, that's what we did. But in the midst of the rehearsal, I got restored. Oh, and and when the baby laid down yes. and yeah. felt like he was dead, I saw what my spirit had went through that. And when, when the father, his father raised him up, oh my goodness. it was like this piece was for me, God has seen me through the wilderness. And I was like, Nita always giving me these parts that I gotta travail in. And, but I understand the truth in it, cause I have been in the wilderness. You know, I told you my story of belonging and not belonging. I know your story, been long, your long, been on you a long time. Yeah. So, Many years, amen. So I just, that's my testimony. Everybody say God is moving in the house. Moving in the house. How many folks know God is moving in the house? You got this? We, we're witnessing miracles right now. Literally. And then when Pastor Jay came up and said, you know, this song could mean this or that for one or the other, and he's absolutely right. That thank you today was on a whole nother level for me. Yes. Thank yes. God. Absolutely. And he kept saying the song was what, personal. personal. And as he was saying it, I was thinking we serve a personal. How many folks know Jesus is your personal savior? In other words, he got my business. You got it? God is so good. Amen. So, so, what an awesome move of God right now. I just wanted to personally thank you all. Come up today, led by the Spirit of the Lord. That was an amazing piece. There's something, there's more to it, it really was. And to God be the glory to both of you. Amen. To God thank be you. all the glory. Thank you, Pastor, thank for you. all the support. Because you immediately said, come forth. I said, I think it's today. God has it. I think we're ready. And you said, come forth. To God be all the glory. I hope it minister to everyone, whoever, whatever God has for you, that that minister for you. And to our morning star church, as you're sitting in the sanctuary in Rocky Mount, I know you've been ministered to also and those online. God has given us an amazing thing to do as two churches. To God be the glory. I got one other thing I want to show you all. Uh, Pam, you... You want me to let it low, or you wanna? How you feel? Okay, good, good. God's doing such an awesome healing in her life, and I, I really so. Everybody say prayer makes a difference. Makes a difference. Truly, let me say this to y'all also, to Dr. Shanita. Thank you for a powerful message <laughs> last Sunday. Her first, her first sermon. Go back and take a look at that. What a, on last Sunday, and also there in Rocky Mount, I want to thank Evangelist Bass for preaching a powerful message there. So much so, somebody came and connected on last Sunday. I just love what God is doing and what he's trusting Marilyn and I with, and to our God be the glory. And let me also share this with you all. You all know we are prophetic. On uh, last year, the Lord gave me three things. I told people to watch the weather, war, and worship. Who remembers that last year? Y'all remember you all have been following weather, war, and worship. What have you been hearing a lot about lately? Weather, war, and everybody said the worship is manifesting. So what you're witnessing today is worship. Now, worship is not just what we did here. It is also a lifestyle. So God has you all. In the, what we call the marketplace, in your jobs, you, you're going to have favor. God is positioning you because if folks are not coming to the church, God's going to use you out there in the marketplace. Watch this, to minister to people, which simply means to listen to people and encourage people and let them know that no matter how things get in this world, we serve a God that's worked it all out. Y'all got that? Now, 
Have you watched the situation in Israel right now? Yeah. And being, you know, I thank God for the opportunity to that um, retired military and understand both sides of that as well as being, you know, a pastor. But there's a lot of prophetic things happening right now. And whether you on, I don't know what side you're on, but everything that's happening right now is a time of fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. If you go and look at scripture, you'll see a lot of things that are happening in the world in our time. There's a fulfillment, okay? But you don't have to fear. How many folks know Jesus as your personal savior? Yeah, yeah. If somebody blew up this building right now, if you know God, I don't mean to scare anybody, you good. Oh, y'all hear me? Because Jesus talked about there'll be trouble. This is not to put fear in you. It's just the world we live in. You get it? It's just the world we live in. But I want you to know if you are wrapped up in your personal relationship with God, just keep living and trusting God. Don't let, a, don't, don't let a mistake make you feel like you missed out on a miracle. God will always use that to train each and every one of us. So you people that are praying and believe in God, continue to watch the weather pattern the war pattern, and worship. Israel is on attack right now. You get it? And when there's an attack on Israel like that, you got to look at it spiritually also. That means the believers, the body of Christ, and we're praying for both sides, but the key to it is God already sent he that has put things back in right standing with him. And everybody said that's Jesus Christ. So I am so grateful to our Lord for that. Also, I'm encouraging each and every one of you, if you get a chance, I want you to get this book right here, How to Help Your Pastor Succeed. It's a good read. Right now, I have uh, Minister Lita Barnes teaching this. She taught it the first time on this past, uh, was it Monday night? And we're doing it once um, yeah, every Monday. And what we're going to do, people don't want to come in. I'm going to change it up, Z. I know I was just going to do the minister. I'm going to just give people the opportunity to come in. But I'm going to give you a chance to get this book. It will impact your life, how to help your pastor succeed. She got it from her brother-in-law church, shared it with me. And there's some information in here that will take you from the multitude to the inner circle. How many folks want to be in the inner circle? Got that? In the name of our Lord. Z, am I doing a pretty good, God, good job on it? I've only read one chapter, so don't be impressed. Everybody said one chapter. <laughs> How many folks want to be in the inner circle? You got it? So to get a chance, get this book, and then we're going to start talking more about it. It's a good read. What God is doing in ministry right now, especially after COVID, ministry has changed. I was reading an article, and they were talking about a lot of churches that are like 60 people or less people are just going by those churches. They're not even going in them. This is, you need to know statistics. And they said where people are going, they're going to mega churches versus going to a church where it looks like it may be struggling. You got it. But that doesn't mean all has failed. So the key to this, what I, the way I see that is ministry has changed. What are you going to do with the ministry that you're in? Yeah, I got that. It doesn't mean anything is failing. It's just the shift in the environment and the climate now. But you need to stay relevant. Everybody say stay relevant. Stay relevant. But that's just where we are. And the key to this is making sure we're releasing information that can encourage people in your personal walk with God. You get it? And if you're walking in a personal walk with God, you're going to connect somewhere. You remember I, I taught a sermon. I told folks to be what? Consistent. Stay what? Con committed and what? Connect. That's important. You can take those three things and apply it to any area of your life. So I wanted to share that this morning. God has shipped this whole thing. But if you get a chance, even if you're not even part of this church or Morning Star, if you're online, just get a copy of this and read this. You get it? And what will happen, you will see your life change tremendously. Because everybody wants to be in the inner circle. Everybody say inner circle. Yeah. Jesus had three people in the inner circle. Peter, James, and John. They went everywhere with him. You got it. He had 12 disciples, but there were three in the inner circle. But guess what? You can go from the multitude, you got it, to the inner circle. And everybody can be a part of it. But what it means is everybody is, is involved and in doing something in the place you're in. Z, am I doing a good job with you? You want to come up and help me out? Come come on, get the mic. Get me, amen. Everybody say, God is shifting the place. We already got the sermon. I'm just doing what God led me. I may 
preach what I got next, and I don't know that. I feel like I need a, whew, Jesus. That worship was so good this morning. And the, the worship, I know it was good at Morning Star also. The dance manager, go ahead, Z. The, the title is How to Help Your Pastor Succeed. But in order to help your pastor succeed, you have to be successful. So the book is really not about the pastor. It's about yourself. And there is a lot of reflection in the book that will help you to become a better person. So that's, take it personal. So that's what the book is about. So for those who might be saying, I want to help the pastor succeed, it's not about the pastor. It's about you. Okay, go sit down. I was on a roll. <laughs> Somebody else I love this moment there. Hey, can you imagine you just talking to people like that? See, we got everybody say relationship. Hey, Amen. I was on a roll, but you just bust my whole bubble then. But go ahead. Go ahead. I'm thinking. And Minister Shanita said, Minister Vaughn, tell them about the inner circle. So the inner circle, uh, although the Bible talks about Peter, James, and John. But the inner circle is being in a place of service. That's what the inner circle is about. So the book teaches you how to be a servant of God. So that's what we all want to be, a servant, because Jesus was a servant. Out of all the things that he did, he healed, he did miracles, signs, and wonders, but he was a servant to everybody. And he even left us an example of how to be a servant. So this is what the book is about, teaching you how to serve. Amen. Thank you, Z. Let's thank God for that. Okay, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Here's what I'm going to do today, because I feel like the Lord really wants to continue to encourage somebody. Your life is going to change today. What I mean by that, you're going to live out the rest of this year very purposeful and making a difference. Got it? You got a purpose in life now. So what God had me doing um, on Easter Sunday, the Lord had me to minister wisdom, the wisdom of three days. Who remember that? Now, for you all that may not notice, I've been preaching about wisdom since last, I don't know, November, October. I'm going to be on wisdom all this year. And God has given me all these messages about wisdom no, wisdom to start out the new year. Um, who remembers so many other wisdom sermons of God? Wisdom for what? Wisdom to keep the devil on the run was another message God gave. I mean, just wisdom, 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 because wisdom is the principal thing. Now, what I want to do, I want to take maybe uh, five to ten minutes and just share a little bit of this message. But what I want to, because I really felt like there was a strong deposit today. And I want you to leave out here, somebody say Refreshed. I felt like there was a recalibration today. You got it. It wasn't just church. It was a kingdom move of God. Amen. So I want to, the, the wisdom of three days. And what the Lord did, for those that didn't hear this, Jesus kept telling people, I was asked in the book of Mark, I think it was last week. But if you read the Bible in the New Testament, I'm just going to talk to you a minute. Jesus kept telling the people, you can destroy this temple, but in three days, I'm going to get up. Now, to me, he was teaching a principle. We've gone to church, and we, you know, we, came, we come to church on Easter, and everybody come on what? Resurrection Sunday. And then, you know, we preach it real good. He got up. You know how we do. And he got up in what? Three days, and we get excited about it. But Jesus wasn't just saying that. There was something about three days. He could have picked any days. But he said, give me what? Three days. It's important. Why was Jesus doing that? Okay. And when he got up out of the grave, what he was saying was that the wisdom of three days, there were three things that God gave me. I want y'all to y'all remember this. Redeeming power, rescuing power, and resurrection power. Everybody say, I got that. How many folks in here got a job? How many folks in here married? How many folks here got a boot in? I'm going to say that. A boot. You know what y'all call them? What y'all thought I said? <laughs> you should have seen some of y'all faces, huh? 
excuse, excuse, excuse me. They don't say boo no more? Oh, it sounds like I said booty. No, I did not say booty. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor said boo, boo. Excuse me. How many of you have a significant other? I'm trying to relate to y'all folks. <laughs> that is hilarious, boy. You know, you got social media now. Boy, I hope that don't go viral. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what man says their prayer right now? You know, the only thing folk need is a reason. Here's a pastor at a church, and he was saying, <laughs> or oh, me, amen. Let me get past that. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need to laugh. You need to smile. It ain't, it's not that bad. None of us went to Calvary. None of us went to a grave. So every chance you get an opportunity to get beside a believer or come to church, you need to come with your best smile. So I might come in with a frown, but I'm leaving out. Because Jesus went through something for each and every one of us. Amen. Excuse, okay, I'm, that, that was not what I said. Lord, have mercy. I can't believe y'all even thought I said that. Don't judge me. I'm going to get up in three days. <laughs> but that's what Jesus kept declaring, that three-day principle. Everybody say three days. So I say to myself, anytime I'm faced with things, I keep saying, I always say, give me Three days. That makes sense to anybody? Somebody say three days. three days. Why? Why? Because in the three days, there was redeeming power, rescuing power, resurrection power. What was Jesus trying to get across? He was simply saying, I got power. And I ended the sermon on last Sunday telling people that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. Another word for power is ability. Everybody say ability. Listen, I've been preached to enough and preached to enough in my life now where the sermon has to be more than a sermon. Because I got to leave out of this building. And you got to go and face the world. And how can I take what was taught on Sunday to apply with what I'm dealing with in my mind even though I'm trying to be progressive. So what can I do? I got to remember that because Jesus got up, I have redeeming power. Who wants to redeem something? Do you feel like you've lost some things and you want to redeem it? Keep living. You get it? It may not happen overnight, but it's going to happen. <laughs> Rescuing power. How many folks love to be rescued? Have you ever drowned in your emotions? Faces some things. He said, I need somebody to throw me a life jacket, throw me a preserver. And then the preserving a life jacket is what you're getting right now. Just a word of God to encourage you to grab hold of what's being said. How do I do that? Everybody say mentally. Okay. All right. I'm going to close now. For real. I promise you. Because I really wanted you to get this with what is going across. I want you to say, you know what? I got something I can hold on to. Watch this and say resurrection power. That was the third thing, the promise of three days. Jesus kept telling them over and over, you can destroy this body. You can talk about me. You can beat me. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to do something to let you know you can't keep me down. How many folks ready to get up and start something? Here, throw your right hand in your ass. I'm ready to go start something. Amen. Yeah, why am I going to start something? Because God showed me that I got the ability to get knocked down, but don't stay down. Where am I getting up people at? Am I making sense? Somebody say short and to the point. That's the power of three days. Jesus just wanted them to know, hey, you're going to go through some things. You're going to face life, but no, you were not created to stay down. Got it? It's so powerful. Now, what is a good teaching about that? Check this out. I'm going to show you one thing here that I wanted to bring to today. And in the book of John, the 21st chapter, the Lord allowed me to go there. I want to show you all one person. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Come on, stay with me now. Let's bring, let's bring this into our lives. How many folks go through things and say, Lord, why am I going through this? 
if you had been here, I wouldn't have to face this death situation. Death doesn't mean the physical death. Just facing things. Y'all got it? Somebody said, just going through things. Get used to it. You just going to keep going through things. But guess what you got to remember? Three days. Three days. Get it? Which simply means I got the power to come out of something. Now watch this. He said, if you've been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God would give you whatever you ask. Check this out now. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. How many folks feel like you can go down, but you're going to rise again? And let me tell you something. I'm not coming up the same. And here's the point that I really want to get to, and I'm going to teach the rest of this on next week. It's what I heard the Lord saying. Jesus said, your brother will rise Again, that's a prophetic word for somebody. Yes. You're buried, but God said you will rise again. Spiritually, mentally, what? Physically. She, look, she, she said, yes, said Martha. He will rise again when everyone else rise at the last day. Watch this. Here it is. Verse 25. Jesus told her, I am three days and a life. <laughs> Let me try to remember. He said, I am the resurrection and life. Here's the key to it. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this? The wisdom of three days. You got that? God is still saying that today. Their brother, I want you to get this real quickly. Take, take this away. I'm done. Come get this podium. I'm done. And I'll finish the rest of this next week. For real. Y'all, I can't believe he's doing it. For real. Because there's so much that's happened here today. I want you to grab some nuggets. But watch this right here. Lazarus actually, if you read the first part of this chapter, had died. When they sent to get Jesus, his sister, Martha and Mary. Everybody said Martha and Mary. You get it? And Lazarus, they were good friends of Jesus. I mean, real good friends. They even talked about when Jesus would do ministry in their area, he would always stop by Martha, Mary, and Lazarus' house. Can y'all imagine having a relationship like that with Jesus? Where he stopped by your house. You get it? And just sit out with you. And just hang out with you. And just talk to you about being Jesus. Can I get at least three folks that know that he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever, and he still stops by your house, on your block, in your community? Somebody say, it's a spiritual thing. Jesus don't physically walk up to us. That's why he died, so he could send back the Holy Spirit to your house, in your life. He said, you can destroy this temple, but in three days, I'm getting up. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, this is a bad temple right here. And say, it's a blessed temple, and Jesus is hanging out in it. Now, if Jesus is hanging out in this temple, it means that you got redeeming power, rescuing power, and resurrection power. So, fire me on my job. Talk about me. Treat me bad. But you don't know who's inside of me. You might leave me for dead, but I tell you, just give me. And it simply means power. Everybody say the ability to get up out of something. Now, let me give you this right here. Jesus mastered in difficult situations. A strong point. You need to get that. How many folks go through difficult situations? Dead. Been there four days. And if you read the beginning of the chapter, when Jesus was dealing with his disciples, they was, he told them Lazarus was asleep. They thought he was asleep. We ain't got to go if he's asleep. Make a long story short, Jesus said, so you'll understand that Lazarus is dead. Matter of fact, Lazarus had been dead for two days. And Jesus, with his three-day self, was so sure in who he was, after Lazarus had been dead for two days, he waited two more days. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened now. Mary and Martha knew Jesus could bring folks back from the dead. 
because they had witnessed him and heard about him raising up a widow woman's son and Jairus' daughter, as the leader Barn pronounced it. I call him Jairus. Daughter. He was raised from the dead. Hey, have you ever known Jesus to raise something from the dead in your life? They knew this, but here's the thing. The other folks that Jesus raised up, they died, and he raised them up the same day. But Lazarus, four days. It don't matter how many days you've been dead. You just got to remember that because Jesus got up in three days, he can walk into your life and turn things around. Who's ready for that right now? Somebody say the promise of three days. So what do I really want you to get from this message? Keep living your life. But remember, he has given you, and, so much, and I'll tell you more about this next week, there's so much he's given you in getting up out of the grave in three days. So people, guess what? You're going to go through things. You're going to face things. But just keep growing. And just keep going. Amen? And watch God allow you to exercise your redeeming, rescuing, resurrection power. Amen? Who's ready for a promotion in God right now? Who's, I say in God. Who's ready to get promoted in God? You got it. I'm speaking favor over somebody's life right now in the name of Jesus. And I want you to start declaring, just give me three days. It's a principle that releases power in my life. You got it? Now you don't have to compare yourself to the other dead person because God don't dwell with the dead. Jesus said, do you believe? How many folks believe? The only thing he wants us to do is just believe. How many folk believe God created you? How many folk believe that it was God that awakened you this morning? How many folks believe that God has forgiven you? How many folks believe that he got up out of the grave in three days? If you're a Christian, that's all we got. That's all we live on, the fact that he got up out of the grave. So guess what? There's a war going on. And there may be a world war that will break out. But guess what? They can blow up everything in the world. But because Jesus got up, we don't die. We live forever. The Bible said to die is to be out of body and with Christ, with your spiritual self. Somebody lay hands on your body and say, body, you're dying right now. I'll make sure y'all understand that your body that you got right now physically is dying. But there's a spirit inside of you. There's a soul inside of you that because of the resurrector, because of Mr. Three Days himself, we live and we can keep going in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, he lives. And I can face tomorrow. Let me ask you one question. How many folks ready for your tomorrow? Well, then tomorrow, no matter what comes your way, you just keep on declaring that I am a child of the living God. Not one weapon, not one idea, not one plan formed against me shall prosper. I was born again. I was born to be a conqueror. I was born to be victorious. I might go through some things. I could even fail. I could even face hell. But guess what? I was born to put the fire in hell. How many folks ready to put the fire in your life? The ideas in your life, the suggestions in your life that has nothing to do with Jesus in your life. I wish I had about 10 people that would give somebody a high five and say, you got the power, three-day power, the power to walk right, the power to talk right, more than start, the power to live right, the power to pray, the power to call those things that be not as though they were, the power to praise God, the power to tell him thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for waking me up this morning, the power to let the devil know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I need you to go to three people and tell them you got the power. You got the power. Go ahead. Start that business. Go ahead. Create that atmosphere. Go ahead. Morning Star. Victory. Those online. The wisdom of three days. Come on, Trey, walk in your three days. I need some people to start walking like you're coming out of a tomb. 
walking like God been good to you. Walking like you can lay hands on something and say, this shall live. My vision, my dream, my bank account gonna live. Come on, somebody. My bank account shall live. My promotion shall live. My marriage shall live. I feel a breakthrough coming on. I feel like something up in here. My God is a good God. Yes, he is. I see you. Yes, he is. Somebody say I'm blessed. 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 God, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 The promise of three days. Let's pray for some people at the altar. Now I want those that want to come, I want you to walk in your promise right now. And I want you to walk like you never walked before. We live in a world that's trying to put everybody in a grave situation. But God said you were not made for dirt to be thrown on you. Come forward now in the name of Jesus. And I want you to declare that the promises of God are yes and amen. Morning star. Victor, I want our ministers to come across. Lift those hands up. Morning star the ministers. Lift your hands up like we're doing here. And this is for people that say, I got the whole thing today. Got it. I got it through the look, and if you even if you in your seat, it's fine. But I'm just saying for those that feel led, you know, look, cause this is about going for we're the believers we're the head not the tail you're the head you got to start acting like that don't base on what you got base it on what God's got how many folks know God's got you come on somebody <laughs> you get ready to live your best life you got to how many folks believe that Jesus said it tomorrow he said you're gonna live your best but pastor I I'm facing pain you're gonna live God said, I'm teaching something. That was a dead, but three days showed up. So I want three days to show up in my life, in my mind, in my thoughts. Got it. You are somebody. Every now and then, people just need to be reminded. God didn't make a mistake when he created you. Come on now. You can face sickness, sadness, even death. But guess what? We live. How many folk believe you live? Let me pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you just for the move in this service today. At Morning Star, at Victory God, those that are online, you're up to something great. With war and politics and internal battles going on in people, God. People stabbing in malls. People just shooting just because. We will put our trust in you, the way maker. Lord, each one of these people that are standing at this altar, I pray that they will walk in their redeeming, rescuing, resurrection power, which is simply the ability to live our purpose and the plan that you have for each and every one of them, God. And yes, God, pain and trouble may come, but it's just an opportunity to show that you master in difficult situations. Thank you, God, for being that situation corrected in our lives. And God, if there's anybody at this altar that's given their life to Christ for the first time, here or at Morning Star, God, or those just sitting in the sanctuary, they're saying, Lord Jesus, I don't want to make it another day without acknowledging your voice in my life. God, I thank you that today they will receive the voice of the Redeemer, the Rescuer, the Resurrector, God. Then God, thank you for healing right now. Thank you for healing mentally. Thank you for healing spiritually. Thank you for healing physically. Thank you for healing financially. Thank you for healing the social ills in our lives. You are an amazing God, magnificent God. God, you're so amazing and so wonderful. We're just glad to call you our Savior, our Waymaker. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and give God glory. Amen.
Just stick up three fingers and say, three days. You may go back to your seats with your blessed selves. At Morning Star and Victory, what a mighty God we serve. He is so good. Wow. And if anybody want to connect with this ministry or at our Morning Star ministry, please get with someone in our ministry to get personal information on you. It's a great time to be connected in a place where you can continue to grow. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. God is so good. <laughs> yeah. Say to say, self, I'm so glad you came to church today. <laughs> say, self, I'm so proud of you. Say, so I was in the right place at the right time. And my God may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. You got to preach and say, but he always. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Come on, church. Come on, morning. So I help. On time, God. Y'all better say, church, may not come. May not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Say it, y'all. Say he's on time, God. I see you, but yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Oh, he's an on time God. I see you back there. Yes, he is. Well, Job said he may not come when you want him, but he but will. He'll be there right on time. Hallelujah. Yeah, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Put those hands together for Jesus. Come on, Jemina. Let's get out giving. I thought we was going to go into the next verse. You can ask. Y'all know it. Come on. Hey. Okay, we got some soloists out. Can I have fun for a little bit? Yeah, come on now. Woo. Yeah, what do you say? All around me. Y'all sound good out there. Keep singing. Come on, stand up on your feet. We're about to go to the house and have a great. I tell you, man, he's an on time God. Come on, yeah. Yes, he is. Damn, you started this. Here we go. On time God. Her, she said he's on time. May not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Well, he's an on time. Let's repeat that. The he's an on-time Come on, let's make it personal like my brother said earlier. Is he on time? He's an on-time Come on, let's say it one more time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah, hallelujah. 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 How many of y'all know he's on time? Yeah, he ain't never late. He's on time. And the reason why he's on time, because he is eternal, right? He's every day, he's every second, every minute, and every hour. And we're grateful. Man, that was an awesome. Let's praise God for our apostle and the flow in the house today. Wow, wasn't it amazing? I'm so glad that you always listen to the Holy Spirit. And, you know, he who teaches us when and where and how. Amen. And you don't deviate. You say, if God told me to do this, then I'm going to do that. If you're telling me to do this, then I'm going to do this. Amen. You're right. Obedience. Amen. So if you're visiting with us for the first time, we're not going to ask you to stand, but we do want to acknowledge your grace and presence. So if you're visiting with us, just wave your hand like this. We want to see who you are. Thank you so much, so much. Come on, Victory. Let's give them a hand. Praise. How you doing, sir? How you doing, ma'am? Thank you so much for visiting with us. Wow. We're excited. We're so happy. That you are here. Amen. And I'm, and I'm being for real. We're really happy about that. We love when people we have never seen before come and grace us with their presence. Amen. And we've got some friends that haven't been here in a while. Oh, man, I'm so glad to see your faces. Alita. Yeah, girl, you know I was going to call you out. 
<laughs> and Gino, frat brother, and Devin, and Brittany, and Arthur, and Shannon. Hey, how y'all doing, man? We just glad to see y'all. And so low back there said, are your friends in the house this morning? So thank you so much for coming. We know you all aren't visitors, but you're family like us. So I did want to acknowledge you all coming and take time and be with us this on this morning. And if you do want to join this great church, then Nita is on the wall. She's going to take you back and, and get your name and information. So if you do want to join, then thank you so much in advance for making this your home. And if those of you that get tired of visiting, you can come on home, okay? That's right. So um, we're going to have our announcements at this time. Am I right, Niger? Announcements, yes. And as we are doing our announcements, we are going to go ahead and give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measures, press down. Who know the word? Hang it together. Running over. What shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be given to you again. We got to learn that scripture again, Dad. We used to say that every Sunday. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your seed. God, we know that every time that you give us seed, it never leaves our hand. It may leave our hand, but it never leaves our lives. So, Father, we thank you for the increase. We thank you for everything that you continue to give us over and over again. Father, I thank you for the cheerful givers that are giving in this house today. They're saying, I can't wait to get my seed in the ground because I know a harvest is coming. Amen. So we thank you for the harvest. We thank you for the harvest in, in any form, financially, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, whatever. We thank you that you continue to grow in our lives, God. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. So listen up real quick. We're going to have our announcements at this time. Good morning. These are the upcoming events for Victory International Christian Center. For the month of April, the tribe of Simeon will be filling mason jars with spare change to donate to a nonprofit youth program entitled Mind Your Biz. This is a summer youth program where youth are taught entrepreneurship. At the end of the program, cash prizes are awarded to jumpstart their business. So from April 1st until April 30th, we will collect spare change from everyone and fill mason jars. Your point of contact will be Attorney Nita Chase. April 21st, no need to hurry home after service to get something to eat. Four by two catering will have food available for purchase immediately after service. Your point of contact is owner operator Jacqueline Slater Ware. April 27th, join the Strength of She Women's Fellowship for our monthly assembly. 1 p.m. in the Hancock Bank building. 888 Howard Avenue, Biloxi, Mississippi. It's a whole vibe. Please RSVP with your tribe leader. For more information, join our Facebook group. Your point of contact is Attorney Nita Chase. April 28th, join us for our quarterly family reunion. Second quarter's theme of the potluck is soups and salads. Bring your favorite soup and or salad and join us for our quarterly family reunion. Come hear what God is doing in Harrison County, Tuesday, April 30th, 6 p.m. at Lyman Community Center, 13472 U.S. Highway 49, Gulfport, Mississippi. More information is located in the vestibule. May 18th, join us for our mental health roundtable immediately after service. Our mental health professionals will help us navigate our daily landscape. We would like to congratulate the civilian of the quarter, our very own Jamina McCarter Ballard. Now that's what we call Marketplace Ministry on Showcase. Every fourth Sunday is our corporate Sunday. We wear Sunday strong shirts as a collective. Purchase your shirt today in the fellowship hall. Intercessory prayer and prophetic teams available immediately after service. 
Welcome to Victory International Christian Center. On behalf of Apostle Carlton G. and Leading Lady Marilyn E. McCarter, thank you for joining us for our worship service today, both here in the sanctuary and online. If you'd like to become an active member of Victory, a member is waiting for you on the left side of the sanctuary. There is room for you at Victory. If you're celebrating a birthday, an anniversary, a newborn, promotion, graduation, or if you're newly wedded this week, please stand as we celebrate your victorious moment. On behalf of Apostle C.G. and Leading Lady Marilyn E. McCarter and the entire Victory family, happy birthday and congratulations. Announcements must be received two weeks in advance. Please email Nigel Steger and Nigel Steger at VicOnline.com. We are nearing the end of our service. I say this every week. And still trash is found both on the floor and the seat. So, so again I say, this time with a little more, please put the trash in the can. Don't be a tease. These have been your upcoming events. Thank you for listening and participating. Amen. So Jackie, stand up real quick. We're going to be eating. Uh, yeah, this is, how do you say it? Two, four by two catering. She's going to be cooking for us, not this Sunday, next Sunday after church. And look, girl can cook now. So you can go back there and get you a bite to eat, and we'll be excited about that, all right? I want people to see your faces. And I heard, sister, you are, you You got your, your, your granddaughter, niece got her your graduate doctor graduating with your doctor there you go wow that's awesome Woo! the go girl that's amazing for anybody that continue on with your education i don't have the patience so god bless you <laughs> all that studying girl i'd be asleep so to god be the glory and winter you got your doctor too i don't know if we you gonna run out <laughs> I don't know if we ever fully, fully said that anybody else get their doctorate and bachelor's degrees. We got any high school graduates, Atiana, stand up, graduating in a few weeks. Yeah, buddy. We got one out. One down and one to go. All right. My children back there looking like, you know what? Mommy, just stop, okay? Just stop. It's all good. What'd you say? I got up because I do have a PhD. What is it? What is it, Mom? What is it? Portion of the Holy. Oh, no. <laughs> you right. So um, I, I think that's all I wanted to highlight, I believe. Make sure y'all get your books. Pastor didn't say, but we're meeting on Zoom on Monday nights. It is awesome. So make sure you get your book, How To help your pastors succeed. Man, we having a great time. We laugh. We have a good time with Minister um, Zelita Barnes on Monday nights, and we're, we're helping ourselves help him. Amen? So come on more with the, with the, on the bag wagon. What's the author, Dad? What's the name of the author? Who? Dave Williams. So Dave Williams, How to Help Your Pastors Succeed. I bought it for like $4 online. So let's get our reading on it. Let's grow. Amen? Okay, so y'all can stand up on your feet. We are going to leave this place, but never got its presence. And we want all of you all to speak to somebody that you don't know, get somebody's information, uh, say, tell, say good morning. It's not even 12 o'clock. Pastor, let us out too early. What are we going to do? We're going to find somebody, right? So make sure you...